and welcome to the Oddity Archive, the show that always follows through. It just takes a while sometimes. So, uh, about a year and a half ago, I set out to do an occasionally recurring thing in which I would devote an entire episode occasionally to a major, or at least moderate, home video format. And uh, I did the Sony U-Matic, and then just a few episodes later I did one on Laserdiscs and all their little offshoots, but then, admittedly, I just kind of forgot about it. So, uh, you know, no time like the present. Today, I want to get back into this, and I figured we, in a way, should kind of start at the beginning here. Today, we're going to start with the would-be first major home video format geared towards consumers. And uh, in many ways, this is kind of the ultimate stereotypical archivism. So with that, today, we take a look at the Capacitance Electronic Disc, or CED. I remember some restaurant my family used to frequent had a selection of CED caddies stuck to a wall in lieu of more traditional artwork. You know, as in the oh-so-90s, how much crap can we stick to the walls aesthetic. Anyway, I soon found out that these things were called capacitance electronic discs, or CEDs. It wasn't until sometime in high school when I finally encountered my first CED player. I was at a military base, commissary slash base exchange, all in one building, with my parents that allowed veterans to hawk their, often random, wares in the hallway. One of these guys had a CED player and a few discs, and he wanted $400. Needless to say, I passed. Anyway, over the next several years, I looked for a unit in fits and starts, and eventually won a very badly misspelled eBay auction for a low-end unit for ten bucks, though I seem to recall the shipping being about three to four times that amount. Anyway, in the years since, I've accrued a very small collection, only about a dozen, of these discs. Having said that, I don't think it's really going to shock anyone when I say that I don't really consider myself to be a major CED aficionado, but that certainly hasn't stopped me from periodically watching a disc or occasionally adding another one to the collection. Guess what time it is. In 1964, RCA charged four of its employees with the task of developing a method of playing back audio and video via phonographic means. Because of the tight resources, it took the next several years to so much as determine the most plausible means of, for lack of a better term, encoding the discs. To add insult to injury, in a truly bizarre bit of company politics, RCA Laboratory's head of research, James Hillier, who'd co-invented the electron microscope, demanded that this proposed new video technology focus on electron beam recording methods. Cause, you know, his history with electrons. Problem was that electron beam recording consistently resulted in, well, inconsistent results. It took until 1976, but the developers were finally able to go with the, by this point, cheaper and more reliable, electromechanical method of recording. But I digress. The first workable CED came about in 1972, when developers were able to get 10 minutes of an episode of Get Smart on disc. This disc was playable on the, as it was known, February prototype CED player of which there are no known surviving working units. Only a black and white still from this disc remains, footage-wise at least. Over the next several years, the CED's bugs continued to be slowly worked out. The most notable of these issues was on how to manufacture and handle the discs, Indeed, for the first decade plus of development, the idea was that the discs would be stored in standard record sleeves and handled 100% manually. Given the speed that the discs played at, 450 RPMs for an NTSC model, 
even tiny specks of dust could cause the stylus to jump, and hence skip, so this idea didn't stick. Also, given the speed plus the need for the disc to be conductive, a number of potential styluses, or styli, were attempted and rejected. In the end, the discs would be made of a PVC carbon blend, for conductivity purposes, and coated in a thin layer of silicone lubricant, for the sake of the stylus. To reduce exposure to dust, the discs would be housed in a caddy, and the machines themselves would handle the more fragile parts of loading and unloading. Like the Laserdisc, the discs would be double-sided and carry up to one hour of footage per side, and unlike Laserdisc, only up to two channels of audio. Read stereo. We have learned how to press, clean, and lubricate discs in a sophisticated, highly automated, and clean environment. RCA's initial projection for the CED's release was to be sometime in 1977. Given all the aforementioned issues, that date didn't even come close to happening. It took until March of 1981, but the CED was finally released, by which point Betamax, VHS, and even Laserdisc were already on the market. What RCA hoped for was that the lower manufacturing costs of the players and discs, and hence the final consumer price, would give it a leg up amongst the competition. The first CED players retailed for $500, and the discs were usually $20 apiece. To put this in perspective, VHS decks still ran in upwards of $1,000, and pre-recorded tapes could cost in upwards of $100 each at the time. Despite the cost benefits, by 1981, most folks that wanted home video wanted something recordable, and those that were okay with non-recordable formats were hitching their wagons, if they hadn't already, to the Laserdisc. While the CED actually bested the sales of Laserdisc in their first year, sales were still nowhere near the tape-based formats. To add insult to injury, things never really got all that much better. The sales of everything else continued to grow, while the CED just kind of flatlined. To show just how far and fast things had fallen, by the time RCA pulled the plug on new CED players in the spring of 1984, new units started at $150. In some cases, the last units managed to dip below the $100 mark, on clearance. Meanwhile, attempts at new revisions to the technology, such as pseudo-interactive educational titles and more feature-laden, high-end, and industrial models, were shelved quickly and permanently. The last discs rolled out in 1986, the last title released being an in-house Memories of Video Disc private release. In its lifetime, only about 700,000 players were sold, and RCA reportedly lost some $600 million on the project. Did I mention RCA had been manufacturing VCRs since 1977? What are you waiting for? What if we threw in a free cassette? Well, okay, two. Two? Okay, double it. Four cassettes? Fourteen hours of blank tape worth almost $100. I think you could argue that the CED is best remembered today more for its shortcomings than anything else. Like any other format in which direct physical contact is made with the media itself, the signal quality degrades over time. Given the speed and phonographic nature of the CED, it was especially prone to degradation, not to mention debris issues, as discussed earlier. Most notoriously, because of these two factors, after just a few plays, CEDs often begin to skip. A worn and or scratched CED is pretty much a lost cause. Also given the format's phonographic nature, the stylus would wear out over time and need replacing, at $50 a pop. To add insult to injury, the CED's drive belts were also known to slip and stretch. As you might guess, all this has made it a lot harder for old-school AV geeks, like myself, to maintain working units. Okay, well, I don't mind. 
I don't think I'm going to blow too many minds by saying that had RCA been willing to throw their resources, I mean really throw their resources into the development of the CED and been more open to different production methods and such, and probably most importantly been able to get it out the door by 1971 or two or so, I think uh, at least certainly in the short term they would have had a real winner. But uh, as we all know, that wasn't to be. So anyway, switching gears here, uh, we've been discussing this format in fits and starts as far back as the original Format Wars episode. So I guess we're about due for a better and hopefully definitive look at my own, admittedly rather low-end, CED setup. And uh, why don't we crack open a disc caddy while we're at it, just for the hell of it. Longtime archive viewers have probably seen this disc before. This is my token bad uh, CED. This is one that I has never played right since I've owned it. So it's become my sacrificial disc. It's the one that I've done a lot of demos with. And um, I figured I would crack this thing open and let you take a little look at the disc. Um, yeah. To do this, if you're dumb enough to do so, you will need two small screwdrivers. And there's two little posts in there. I don't think my camera's going to pick it up too well. But you uh, hold them together with the two screwdrivers, which is going to be near impossible for me to film. Um, and then you can pull out the entire caddy. So, um, yeah, let's hope this isn't too awkward. Try and keep it in the shot because the camera is behind me. So, uh, one latch. And this will probably be out of the shot. No, maybe, maybe not. Okay, two latches. And... Hey, I got it on the first shot. So, here it is. It has some dust on it too because I've taken this out before. Um, but, you know, as I said, sacrificial disc. It's uh, not really that big of a loss to me. And uh, it's, it's not a rare CED either, so um, if I wanted to replace it, it wouldn't be too tough. Um, yeah, I don't think the camera's going to pick it up too well, but it has very super, super fine microscopic grooves, even by uh, phonograph standards. And, um, yeah, at the end of the thing, there's a locking groove two-sided, and um, I thought you'd probably just want to see this, and now you have. And now I guess I ought to try and load it back up, which uh, won't be awkward at all. And I'm sure I'm scuffing it up more, but like I said, it's, uh, it's my requisite <laughs> sacrificial disc. And then it just comes together when you put it back in. All right, let's take a look at my player. Well, if you've watched Archive long enough, you've seen my CED player before, but given the subject matter, I figured I'd better take it out again. So, here it is. And there is not much to it, so this is not going to be a long segment. Um, this is truly a bottom-of-the-line model. There is no remote control. There's not even a rewind function on here. All there is is fast forward, pause, which just equates to lifting the stylus up. There is no freeze frame, no uh, still store or anything. Uh, reject, aka eject, and the power switch. Real deep stuff. So let's take a cut here and look at the equally inspiring back. This is one of the later model CED players. Uh, as you can see, it was made in November of 1983. As I discussed already, RCA stopped making these in 84. 
But I just wanted to show that to you, and uh, I, I believe this is truly the bottom of the line model, the 090. Alright, so let's swing around here. And this is about it. Uh, I suppose you could pass signals through this if you want to, use it as sort of a middleman, because uh, it has in and out coax. And uh, it's got, of course, the channel 3 and 4 switch, albeit backwards this time. And uh, I have a lot better luck on channel 4, for whatever reason. But uh, let's take another cut here, and we'll show this with the top open, and I'll load a disc in it, and you can take one more look at that. Okay, I've got the top off, and of course I've had to go into full-on autofocus mode for this, if you haven't noticed already. And um, there's really no great way of doing this, so I'm just going to have to pick up the camera, uh, we'll take a look in, and uh, I might have to take another cut here. We'll see how it goes. So, I know I'm not going to get too far where I'm at, but if I pick up the camera, you can see the main mechanism, and there's a belt under here, and the stylus is way down in here somewhere. Uh, it won't really be noticeable, obviously, until I have a disc in there. So, uh, let's take a cut, and we'll load in my sacrificial disc. Okay, there's the disc, and you can see kind of a strobing optical illusion. That's the thing going around, of course. And I'll have to fast forward the disc a bit so you can see as much of the stylus as you're going to. But uh, let's do that. Let me hold down the fast forward here, and you'll see this whole bar just start creeping up. And here it is with all the writing on it. There it is. Okay, now for the tricky part, trying to unload this properly and let you actually watch. So, uh, let's get back in here. We're 27 minutes in. Alright, we're just waiting on the UL. Alright, let's see if I can actually make this visible. Okay. And there you go, back to normal. Quite some time ago, I received a comment on the original Format Wars episode saying, and I quote, I call bullshit. It's not that hard to get a CED to play. It's one of my favorite formats in my collection. Okay, you're entitled to your opinion on favorite formats and all. But I have a feeling that if this person really does own a CED player, which I'll give them the benefit of the doubt, I'd guess it's one of the earlier ones where it's still partially a manual loading mechanism. But these later ones, they tried to go over to automatic loading completely. And that's where things get a little more touchy. So uh, here it is, an encore, about three and a half years after the fact. I've got the CED player here, let's turn it on, and I will show you that the auto load doesn't do so hot. Turn it on, wait for the load sign, and today's film will be The African Queen with Humphrey Bogart and Katherine Hepburn, a actually very good movie, and uh, one of the better condition discs in my collection. So let's try and have this happen completely automatically. And lo and behold, it's still in there. So here's how I have to do it. And it still doesn't always work, but it works about 90% of the time. What I uh, have to do is basically jam it in there. 
jam it in, push it till it clicks. Hopefully the mic picked that up and pull it back out. And let us pan up to the TV. And there we go. Well, that's it for today's archive. Join us next time when I finally acquire a good high-end stereo CED player and then scramble to find a bunch more stereo discs for it and try and make another episode on it and, you know... We can stay right home and see it all, night after night. We won't have to stand in line, we're staying in tonight. You play your disc, I'll play mine, we're staying in tonight.